Yo, 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 what's up guys? Good morning, good morning. Hope y'all are doing well today. It is a beautiful Thursday. Today's Thursday, right? My days are all messed up. I think today is Thursday. I might be wrong. Today is Wednesday, man. I am wait. I'm off, man. I thought today was Thursday, guys. It's a beautiful Wednesday. It's April 29th. Hope everyone had a good day yesterday. All right, guys, so let me know what the volume's like. I just turned it down. That should be good, but let me know what it's like. I'll, I'm going to listen to it real quick and check it. Alright, that should be good enough. Uh, maybe I could turn it down a slight bit, like a slight bit, let me see. Maybe like right here would probably work fine. But what's up guys? Alright, uh, let me, let me uh, do this. Alright. This is the stock market right now. This is the SPY itself. The SPY just had a huge push. I gotta look up what this is. Look at the SPY right now, man. The SPY's up to the 292 level. Did they put more money back in the market? Is that what I'm assuming is going on? Did they did they uh, dump a bunch of money back into the market? Hold on. Why is this spike happening? last 20 seconds man i caught this move what's going on with the spy guys somebody help me out here all right so galad has been halted in pre-market and news is pending we have uh gild gild met its primary endpoints it's not moving that much why is, why is the spy moving like this though guys I gotta look at Benzinga here. Why is this happening? <laughs> What's up guys lower the music more this should be okay why is this happening though guys look at the spy man the spy just ripped up like three bucks why is this going on i don't see any catalyst behind it i'm gonna have to look up on think or swim i'm not seeing anything here uh i guess this is uh this is following galed gilead's data that came out that positive data that came out uh i guess that's what this is from um, is again, I guess this is from Gilead, Galed, not Gillette, the best a man can get, it is Gilead, with a D. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know why this spike is happening. Um, I'm, I guess it's from positive data, 
because GILD is actually halted right now, I guess. And so we can't see the move on GILD, but apparently it had positive data that came out today. And so that is thus influencing futures in the SPY, I guess. Uh, so yeah, we're going to keep an eye on that. But as you can see, in the last two to three minutes, the SPY has ripped up about $3 or so. Uh, and it, it's since pulled back about $1.50. But, uh, but yeah, that's what's going on right now. We'll see why that's going on. Who knows why it's happening, but it is happening. So we'll see what happens here. Interesting level uh, for the market now as well. Uh, we also have TROC. TORC uh, gapping up from 122 to 165 here and I can go ahead and go over the specific catalyst for this move on TORC uh... all right so All right, so it's rest tour bio man this, uh, okay so that's what it is it is torc it's rest tour bio is up 38 percent after they received a buyout offer um so yeah they received a buyout offer it doesn't say who from but they received a buyout offer for troc we'll see what happens it's gapping up from 122 to 162 so it's gapping up 40 cents uh, we also have crmx or cmrx gapping up from about 151 to uh two dollars exactly for cmrx it had a COVID 19 treatment study that came out um they said it worked closely and this is all quoting now from uh dow jones newswires and it says quote is this too loud somebody said it's too loud i, I listened to it and it sounded just right what's the volume like guys let me know if it works gilead Um, yeah, the volume should be fine, actually. Uh, but yeah, so, CMRX is up. I'm going to go ahead and quote this, and this is from Dow Jones Newswires. Uh, it says, the biopharmaceutical company said it has worked closely with critical care physicians treating COVID-19 patients and with the US FDA to develop a phase two and three protocol to determine the to determine if DSTAT can reduce the need for mechanical ventilation and improve the rate of survival in patients with severe COVID-19 infection. The phase two and three trial to determine the safety and efficacy of DTS or DSTAT in adults with severe COVID-19 who are at high risk respiratory failure. Eligible, eligible subjects will be those with confirmed COVID-19 who require hospitalization and supplemental oxygen therapy. The primary endpoint of the study is the proportion of subjects who survive and don't require mechanical ventilation through day 28 uh, so yeah that news came out and cmrx is up because of it again from 150 roughly about 50 cents 49 cents to be exact um, technically it's uh yeah it's exactly 49 cents uh we'll see what else we got we got uh rrd here gapping up i don't like the volume bcrx array uh, BCRX doesn't look bad. Let's see what the catalyst is for this one. Sounds fine. Good. No good. All good. What's up, Terry? Many blessings to you as well, bro. Um, but yeah, so BCRX, look at this one. This is BioChrist. They are ripping up here. I like the volume on this one, even though I can't. I probably can't trade it. Not seeing any catalyst besides yeah, I don't see any new catalyst here except for Kramer. Maybe mentioning BCRX. Uh it looks like a pump, in all honesty. We got EAT here, which is Brinker International. EAT is gapping up from 1914 to 2250. Let's see what the catalyst behind EAT's move is. EAT. Looks like positive first quarter results for this one. Um, but that came out on the 24th, actually. I don't know why E... Uh, oh, wait. Hold on. Sorry. Wrong stock. Yeah, it's a third quarter adjusted EPS. K 
came out positive third quarter results it looks like sales are down 5.3 percent which isn't too bad uh, but better than expected um, the total revenue for EAT so better than expected total revenue and they are gapping up because of it uh, what else we got guys we got Weight Watchers here I can see WW, WW it's gapping up you know and my theory behind this is just people are home I know I'm eating way more than I probably should but they put out first quarter results that were positive yesterday and after hours as well for Weight Watchers uh, we got Google here which is Alphabet, really. Uh, they are up. Um, Spotify. Gapping up some. But the big news today, guys, is the overall market ripping up here recently because of Gilead's news release. And again, we can look at GILD. They're putting out a release right now, and all this stuff came out in the last eight minutes. They're reporting data from the National, in National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Uh, and this is GILD. Still haven't resumed yet. They're still halted in pre-market. But yeah, they said the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases will provide details at an upcoming meeting. This is why the spy spiked. Because they have data on remdesivir. It's actually remdesivir. Uh, so they put out an NIAID study of remdesivir for the COVID-19 treatment, and they and that met its primary endpoints um, with this. So yeah, they basically put out a study for remdesivir for the COVID-19 that met its primary endpoints, uh, and they're sharing that data with everybody. I think they're sharing it right now. It's halted. They said rems, uh, remdesivir met their primary endpoint in a government study and that a government-run clinical trial evaluating its experimental drug remdesivir in certain COVID-19 patients met its primary endpoint. Um, and so that's the news for GILD, which is Gilead. And uh, it is currently halted. I'm sure we're going to see this one gap up a solid amount after this. But that's the news that is also causing uh, the SPY itself to be up. Um, at least in the last 10 minutes or so. And we can look at the overall market as well here. Um, but we did get prelim first quarter GDP reading down 4.8% versus economist estimate of down 4.4%. All right, so the spending's down, that's good. Um, to read the ETF preview, and this is all quoting from uh, MT Newswires here, and it says, quote, Stock futures were mostly firmer ahead of the opening bell as Wall Street awaits the Fed Reserve's monetary policy decision as the two-day meeting with the Fed Open Market Committee, FOMC, concludes this afternoon, and Fed Chair Jerome Powell will be speaking at a press conference after the policy announcement. Investors were also looking ahead to data on the gross domestic product for Q1 for the quarter one, which will be out at 8.30 Eastern. And again, I think that already came out. Uh, that came out about 11 minutes ago. And again, it looks like the GDP reading was down 4.8% versus economist estimates of down 4%. So we are down in some spending. Uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, we are down 0.8%, it seems like. Uh, but yeah, so... The seasonally, the seasonally adjusted rate is expected to show minus 3.7% according to Econoday estimates compared with the prior level of 2.1%. Um, at 10 a.m. Eastern, the National Association of Realtors will report the March results of its pending home sales index with expectations for a month-over-month -month reading of minus 10% versus the prior level of 2.4%. Also out at the same time will be the April reading of the State Street Investor Conference Index and the Survey of Business Uncertainty. The prior readings were 74.5 and 136.2, respectively. Uh, to move on to commodities here, we have crude is up nearly 17%, and it's been making some massive moves. We can look at the U.S. oil fund, for instance. And it, Okay, so this must have been a reverse split, actually. It sounds like this is a reverse split for the U.S. oil fund. Let's see if they talk about it here. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's up over 4%, but this looks like a split of... Uh, um, Looks like a two and a half, three and a half to one reverse split. They're not the 10 to one reverse split. Maybe more than that. Maybe a 20 to one, 17 to one, really.
My math is way off, guys. But yeah, the oil's up 17%. U.S. oil fund is up over 4%. Natural gas is down 0.3%. So we can look at like UGAZ. Um, and it looks like since this came out, it's actually up now for UGAZ. U.S. natural gas fund is down 0.4%. Uh, then we have gold, which is slightly higher, marginal. Uh, silver is up roughly 2% as well. But yeah, I'm looking at the news for the U.S. oil fund. Like I said, it looks like a 10 to 1 reverse split, uh, roughly. Maybe a 9 to 1, 10 to 1 reverse split, but when did that happen? They're just not going to mention USO's reverse split? It has to be. Uh, 10 to 1, 9 to 1 reverse split. Looks like a 9 to 1, actually. 8 to 1. Okay. Yeah. I work at Tim Hortons. Not good. Hey. These guys go into the story. You know? Uh, I like Tim Hortons, so I've been there. My stepdad's Canadian. My mom actually lives in Canada right now. So my mom, I live in Texas. My mom is like all the way across the continent uh, in, te in Canada right now. She's in Ontario. She lives there. Um, my stepdad is from Ontario. And so I've, I have family up there. Uh, I used to always get into a, a, a playful argument with my, with my uh, stepdad. And my logic is that y'all is a contraction for you all. It might not be a proper contraction, but it's a contraction for you all. And that you can't just throw an S on you and make it plural, you know. Y'all is more correct than use. You know, like use guys. Eight to, eight to one happened yesterday in after hours. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, I knew it looked like once I kind of sat there and looked about at it, uh, I knew I, I figured it was at least eight or nine to one. Um, I was just multiplying by this, so you know. We are in a recession. What? I mean, I mean, here's the thing, right? This is our market. We are effectively right here now. Uh, so, like, we're not that bad. Um, you know, we're, like, we, we, of course, we pulled back some. But we pulled back to the levels that we were at in October of last year. So it's not like we pulled down a huge amount here. Uh, we've rebounded effectively from there. And they're planning to open up the economy on Friday. So we'll see how that affects the, uh, affects the market. And listen, I love Canadians. Super nice people. Uh, poutine is delicious. Pancakes are good. Maple syrup up there is good. I love Canada. Uh, it's super cold and un it's really cold in the winters that I'm really not used to. But aside from that, I love it. All right, guys. Uh, but yeah, that's the market right now. Uh, anything else specific you, you guys want to take a look at let me know we can look at some stuff amc some people some dude was talking about amc yesterday it looks like it worked out for him come to Michigan yeah I've been to Michigan man uh, so so basically I when I was when I was like in between like 21 and 22 uh, I lived in Sault Ste. Marie Michigan and and I kind of lived in both right I lived in I lived in Batchewana Ontario uh, which is like right across the border into Canada and then we actually rented a house in Sault Ste. Marie Michigan and so there's Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and Sault Ste. Marie, Canada, and their sister cities, they call them. 
uh, and so I lived in both, and uh, I lived in both, and then I also lived in Batchewana, Canada, and so I've been out there, you know. guys oh it's a beautiful day team what I don't like about my mouse is that if I accidentally click that it like puts up my whole window you know Should I sell my USO stock? Uh, I don't know, man. Your USO stock, it's really going to depend, right? Like, like a reverse split is not going to... You're not going to profit from a reverse split. Like, they're going to compensate it since, since they're going to take away shares, basically. So, like, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the logic is if, you, if it's a 10 to 1 reverse split and you have 10 shares, instead you're gonna have one share that's worth 10 times what it was before, right? So it's gonna compensate and even out, if that makes sense. PayPal, JetBlue, Bank of America, or no, Boeing, BA's Boeing, right? We can take a look at Boeing. Boeing's actually ripping. Maybe, I, gotta, I might have to start trading these airline stocks. Uh, they've been moving, man. You know, they've been moving. Uh, I might have to start trading them. Boeing had a first quarter net loss as revenue declined. And they're continuing the 737 MAX grounding. We got a release that said Boeing's results... Bo Boeing's earnings were terrible, but the stock is going up anyway. I'm not sure why it's up. Uh, I'm looking to read the article. It's not really telling me. Hey, thank you. Thank you, something. Thank you for the sub, bro. Welcome in. Um, 
Alright, so the best guess of why Boeing is still going up is because they think it's not losing as much cash, or it's not spending as much cash as they expected. And so I guess they're spending less than was originally expected, and so that is consequently causing the stock price to go up and causing an, a bullish sentiment overall is their logic. And that sounds okay. Maybe that's what's going on. But Boeing had bad earnings, and now it is up. So we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe look to short this one at the bell. It just depends. You've got banned. Yeah, guys, never trust anybody that gives you signals. Like, you know what I mean? Um, it's not how it goes. Like, it, it's not how trading works. It, it's a conflict of interest, right? That person has no emotional attachment to your money. And so they don't care, you know? They're just, a lot of times they actually partner with, like, cheap companies to, like, promote them and pump them up. They don't care how, a lot of the times they don't really care how profitable or, or how fundamentally sound the company is before investing in it either because they simply just partner with the company and so they subsequently pump the stock up regardless of whether they actually think it's going to go up if that makes sense and so you got to be very weary of picks in this stock game everybody's going to claim to give you picks again they have no attachment to your money so they don't really care if you lose a lot of the time they're just pumping up stuff uh, so be careful team Puts and calls. Uh. Jacob, man. Jacob. Okay, so number one, I'll say this. Jacob's a boomer. The reason I know he's a boomer is because he doesn't know how to use YouTube chat. And he left me a comment instead of just leaving it in the chat. So let me let me get you guys look. I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about this. I just got a comment that said, <clears throat> "It said turn the music off. We came to listen to you, not be DJ too." That rhymed, bro. You could turn that into a song. You know, uh, we're trying to listen to you read EPS report, and we can't hear because of that awful, pointless music. Is my music that bad, guys? Everybody likes the music. I, I would say a, ma a majority of people here like the music. And sure, some don't like it, but they'll get over it. I'll, look, for you, Jacob, I'll turn it down slightly. I'll slightly turn it down, bro. But like I said, I think you should turn that comment into a song. And if you do, give it to me and I'll play it for you on here. You know, That'll be the irony of ironies. <laughs> but yeah, I turned it down slightly for you, Jacob. You can use the YouTube chat, bro. It's a lot easier than just leaving me a comment, you know. Uh, see if these are not illegal to trade or use, you know. Uh, it's like, it's kind of like the PDT rule. Like, like there's ways to get around everything. Um, you know what I mean? And, but, uh, again, you're not gonna go, you're not gonna get in trouble for trading them. You know, at least I don't think you are. I mean, I don't know. He's dropping a new mixtape? <laughs> Music is great, yeah. Music is good. Yeah, most people like the music, man. And that's what I'm saying. The music's calming. If you're a trader, you understand, like, the benefits of it being calming, you know. Yeah, exactly, Jeff. Hey, thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. Yeah, probably. John, we jam every day. It's all good, baby. I'm lost when you leave and I don't have my tunes. That's right, man. Exactly, dude. I'm doing this as a service to the trading community, guys. And you you all should appreciate it. You know. Like, it's not super loud. Like, I, you know, if I was to... Like I said, I turned it down for him. I'm not hating on you. Who? What's his name again? Jacob? I'm not hating on you, dude. Listen, I turned it down just for you, bro. Just for you, man. You know.
Mitch's position in jet blue. Yeah, JBLU. Yeah, that one's popping up, man. Are these getting just influenced by the overall sector? All right, so I I got a release here that says U.S. Airlines, JetBlue, Delta, and Spirit have asked to be exempt from a rule that requires, and this is all quoting from MT Newswire, so it says, quote, uh, have asked to be exempt from a rule that requires carriers to maintain minimum service levels in exchange for financial aid and allow them to suspend flights to more than two dozen U.S. airports, media reports said late Tuesday. Uh, so yeah, they're asking for an exemption. You can't hear the music anymore, really? Well, yeah, well, here's the thing, right? It's against, it's against the U.S. regulator from offering it, right? Like, a U.S. regulator cannot offer you a CFD account, right? But you could go to a platform that's regulated outside of the U.S., and do that and, and you know that's what I do um, but again it's all preference it's, it's all the same um, the only thing that really matters is whether they pay out you know that's the only thing that really matters technically like TEFs packages and trade net packages are educational packages anyway and it, they partner with you and you become a contractor for them anyway so it's like a little bit different um, but that's one of the ways they get around it but it's basically like it's basically like same thing with the PDT rule right PDT rule uh, day trading with under 25k is against the securities the sec law but you're not going to go to jail if you do it the platform offering it's going to get in trouble you know so it, it's a little bit different uh, it's not a, you're not going to get in trouble for trading them um if a u.s if a u.s regulated platform tries to offer them they'll get in trouble but again you're not going to get in trouble for trading them at least not that i know of i'm not a i'm not an attorney don't you know not liable for any you know wrong information uh always do your own diligence trade responsibly not liable for anything we're, we're here purely for entertainment purposes the inner lawyer in me is like liability statement you know Yeah, the spy's been ripping, man. Uh, like I said, I guess it's from GILD here. Ooh, they did resume. Look at GILD, man. They did resume. Look at this pop. Uh, this is why the spy's ripping. It's from Gilead. Sorry, Mitch has been in Discord messaging me. I just now saw it. Sorry, Mitch. Mitch is going to help us drop the knowledge on the JetBlue stuff. Yeah, it's all unfair. I mean, a lot of it is unfair. But like I said, with that in mind, like, you're not going to get in trouble for trading CFDs. Just like you're not going to get in trouble for day trading with no PDT rule. Um your platform might get in trouble and they might you know restrict your account or whatever they might do but uh like i said you're not going to get in trouble it's not illegal for it's illegal for a, a u.s regulated broker to offer them is what it's is what is what it's illegal for um similar to the pdt rule right and by that logic you're not going to get in trouble for doing it your platform broker might you know if that makes sense What's up, Mitch? Here, let me turn the music down. All right, let me know how that is, guys. It should be good. What's up, Mitch?
Uh, spies ripping up. Weird, dude. Every time I touch this thing, it, ch it messes with the volume. Weird. I'm gonna have to exit out of this and then do the same thing I did yesterday. Yo, meet you there, bro. Yeah, what's up, bro? What's up, dude? Uh... What's up, what's up, everybody? How we doing, traders? Yo, Mr. Thumbs Up. It's... Unfortunately, USO is not up $14. Yeah, it's not. It's a, it's a reverse, it's an 8 to 1 reverse split. And so they've just, they've added more shares. Or no, they've taken away shares. That's what they've done. What's the volume like, guys? I just I had to mess with it just now. Let me know if that works, if that's better. Look at how sparkly my hat is. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get Mitch up here so you can see his a little bit better. There we go. All right, you're good, bro. You should be good with the sound, too. What's going on, guys? You guys excited for another trading day? You guys want the the scoop, as they say? The scoop, the scoop. What's going on today? What is the deal? All right, guys. So what do you guys want the news on first? Uh, you guys want the Gilead story? Uh, Gilead positive news. Um, yeah, I think we went over that one already. Uh, that one is positive uh, data that came out. Yeah, the the real thing about that one is that the, the data really hasn't come out. They just got word that it was going to be positive. So just what I wouldn't necessarily, um, I think what's going to end up happening is people are going to buy the rumor and sell the news in this one. Um, they've already been buying the rumor as Gilead has been releasing um, kind of fluff news in the past. Um, a lot of traders are already in Gilead. Um, a lot of traders saw this one as a 50-50 in the 70s. Um, and now is really getting uh, pumped. Why? A lot of p traders got in their positions already. So let's see if these kind of big resistances will hold over time. That's really what I look for. Um, so wait for their actual report to come out if you're already in it to kind of decide if you're going to stay in it. That's what I would think of. Um, if I was already in it down here at the 70s, I would be like, okay, well, this this at least puts me in a good position. Um, and it doesn't really mean that they, you know, solved the coronavirus because I think if we would have saw that, we would have saw a quick move to 300. Um, GDP numbers actually came out really negative, but I think what ended up pushing the market and why the market's up right now is strictly off of this Gilead news. Um, so that's why the market's holding up. Um, and then we can go into why uh, different stocks are up. Um, I know people are interested in the airlines today, so let's just go really quickly for the news with that. Um, you guys can look at BA. Um, BA actually had bad earnings, but it's up. Why is this happening, guys? So the big question is, what is a cyclical rotation, guys? Um, I think that's what everyone needs to understand is what cyclical rotation is. So cyclical rotation is when a sector rotation happens. A lot of times with these bigger investors, they look for sectors to get hot. Um, a lot of the times they were in, let's say when we were in this down point, um, they went and found some haven in the technology sector, um, the healthcare sector, and that's because we were going down. Um, and now you're seeing what? Those are the only two sectors that are actually down today. Why are they down today? Because the big investors are switching out of those industries and they're moving into different sectors. They're moving into what we call the consumer cyclicals and the cyclical stocks. Why? Because when you have a sector rotation, it's pretty much just a movement of money from one industry to another. As traders try to anticipate 
the next stage. So when they anticipate that next stage, they're just trying to think about where the economic cycle is going. You know, if we're going to reopen up, if the businesses are going to open up, like let's say the airlines, the railroads, the engineering, the metal fabrication, the airports, the business equipments, the waste management, the trucking, these are all the industries that are in those. And so with that, you can watch them actually get some momentum today, get some investors behind them. If we're really going to start pushing through the 300s, I think this is what you're going to see. You're going to see those consumer cyclical stocks, the stocks have been hit the most, start coming back. Um, stocks like today, we can look at the resorts. Um, the airlines are actually up about 7%. So I'll just really quickly look at the stock that I'm in. Um, I'll tell you guys exactly the position I'm in. Um, later today, I'll even put up the position for you guys in the Discord. Um, I'll take a snapshot out in, in Robinhood. Um, but I'm in at 925. Uh, I got in back when they released the news of the bill. Um, I was expecting to come down towards this 674 area, 725 area, and I was going to add in that area, but it never got to that spot. And if you look at the weekly chart, we're actually starting to look really strong. You see, this is the weekly chart to the left, guys. If this breaks out through the resistance up here through 1138, we're going to be looking really strong to at least get back maybe to the shadow of 1640. So that's kind of what I'm looking for, guys. A uh, long term run. I'm looking to have JetBlue at least up to the 16 area, 15 area, and then I could look to sell. Um, for adding spots, I'll probably look at 850 now um, that I'm seeing this bottoming happen at this line, and I could hold right off that $8 point. Um, but overall, I've been seeing that cyclical rotation in stocks, and that's why BA is up today. Um, it's not because I think the earnings report, I mean, the earnings report, if you look at it, it was kind of horrible. Um, but the rotation in the bigger investors getting into these cyclical stocks ends up pushing these stocks up. Um, you can see it on kind of yesterday. Um, the consumer cyclicals were really leading. Um, we had a lot of rentals and leasings um, and also like kind of these uh, these vehicles that are kind of uh, more uh, like, let's say, Harley Davidson, Polaris, these specialty vehicles. I saw them moving up yesterday. So let's see if those get a nice lift. Airlines still leading the industry up 7%. All right, guys, um, what else do we have out there? Let's go ahead and let me see my news right quick. Let's see what I got for you guys. Um, an interesting uh, topic to talk about would be, uh, uh, I saw this kind of talk about uh, buffets. Buffets are gone, man. <laughs> you can kiss those things goodbye. I know Vegas, Vegas is gonna struggle with this kind of change too. Um, I think the Vegas hotels, that's what they mainly run off of is buffets guys so i think they're going to struggle with this because you can't really have a buffet with all this virus talk and social distancing i mean you have to kind of walk in a line i mean are you gonna separate people by six feet the whole time it's just gonna be too much of a trouble to run a buffet now um, so that's interesting to talk about at least to watch for in those uh, resort stocks um I know AMD, I think, had earnings today. Let me try to find those. All right, so AMD hit their target, but uh, annual forecast trimmed as business spending slows down. So that's pretty much kind of uh, a, a positive and a negative. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily wouldn't lean to one side based on the news. Yeah, buffets are over with, man. I ain't going to a buffet. I love buffets, too. <laughs> you know what I tried to do as soon as I found out about that news? I said, where's that Golden Corral stock? Do they got stock? <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's, man. Where's Ryan's stock at? I'm going to short that thing, man. You know? Yeah, man. I started looking for it, really. <laughs> Honestly, I love buffets, dude. In Louisiana, they have Piccadilly, you know, which is like a Cajun buffet. It's super good, man. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting destroyed. Um, let's talk a little bit about GDP. GDP down over 4% today. Um, that's a big drop, man. If you look at a chart over year over year, um, you know, quarter three, quarter four, we were actually up about 2%, 2.1%. And we're knocking two quarters of that GDP growth completely away in one quarter. So um, it's going to be really interesting on, I think, quarter two, because quarter two is really where we saw the hit. And I think this is a little bit of a bigger surprise than people anticipated for quarter one. Um, if this is going to be down 4%, the next one could be possibly double this, if not bigger than that. So. Um, if we've got down to 8%, 10% quarter two, um, some people have been talking that GDP might fall this year as much as 30%. I think that was released by JP Morgan. And so that's going to be very interesting for the overall economy to see if we are going to get into a recession or we're we going to just come booming right back. Um, it's going to be really interesting how businesses reopen and we're just going to have to keep an eye on that. Um, you know, us as day traders, that's what we really do here, guys. We look to take advantage of momentum plays. Sometimes you're going to have to buy stocks that you did. Sometimes you're going to have to sell stocks that you're, you're strongly bullish on. Um, and that's really what we do here. We trade. But this is all a kind of more a longer term investment knowledge. But you can also, hey, there's nothing wrong with also having a long term account while you're doing your day trading. And that's what I've been trying to build up. That's why I have JetBlue. That's why I wanted more stocks. Wasn't able to get the bottom of the spy. But hey, we'll try to get some stocks as we slowly build up. Yeah. Um, stocks that I think are bullish today. Look for maybe Starbucks to keep go going on the rise. I think this one has a real bullish sentiment now that LK has just gotten destroyed. Um, I always look at the stories of competition and that's why I always talk about Beyond Meat guys. Um, but this is a story of competition going away. And whenever competition goes away, I think that's when you can get the strongest reaction to a stock because um, investors started getting away from the stock here in the 90s because LK was doing so well. Once the stock got down there to that 60, we got that news to really start hitting about LK. Then you saw this stock kind of hang out here in the 60s and it was in between a range of 60 and 70. And once LK really got that news to really tank it, you saw it break out through 70. And I personally don't think it might go back to 70. I think this is going up maybe past 100 on the long-term chart, um, just based on the fact that, hey, they had a huge competitor step in their industry and now has stepped out. I'll be back, guys. All right, guys. If you guys want to put up some charts, go ahead and put them up. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Uh, take PayPal, a look at PayPal. Which one, uh, someone uh, put up in the chat. Yeah. Um, this one's looking strong. Um, this is uh, definitely a stock very comparable to Square and their business. Um, some people like PayPal more, some people like Square more. If you can see on the chart, Square looks at a better value right now, but PayPal looks stronger. At least on their daily chart and weekly chart, you can clearly see those runs up and you can clearly see a bottoming here at this 100 level. Um, that's really where you saw the bottom and the, the rip get right back through. Um, so what I would look for PayPal is to see on the long term, if it can hold 110, um, you see last week it pulled back through that level what's that level because if you get above 120 and you don't look back at 110 i think this stock could make a rip probably towards that 130 140s um, especially if we get kind of this push into reopening um paypal is going to get a lift you know they're gonna their credit service um they're gonna go ahead and have their businesses reopen um, just like square and I think they will get a lift in the long run. Uh, we got GE, GE talk. All right, let's talk GE. Um, GE is one of those long-term stocks that your grandfather would have told you to buy, but it just wouldn't have worked out. And this is just a story that goes to tell you that, hey, in the long-term, 
sometimes stocks aren't going to work out. You know, uh, a lot of times you hear this talk that if you just buy and hold the stock for 10 years, that you're going to make money. And GE was one of those that everyone would have told you that that was the truth, but ended up not being it. Uh, GE is a story that, hey, in the 2000s, this stock was valued up $55. And to tell you the truth, the story just never stood in GE. And stocks that kind of moved with it, but kind of went away, is Honeywell. That's H-O-N. Uh, this is a stock that was like GE, but look at the difference. You see the weekly charts, guys? This is what I wanted to show you guys. The weekly charts of GE. GE headed straight down through the years. A stock very similar. Hun, Honeywell here just went straight up through those years. Yeah, man. Honeywell it just, oh. it just shows you like the difference of competitors. Yeah. And sometimes how one competitor can just get so massively better than the other that the other one just goes away. Yeah, I've used Honeywell before. Honeywell's not bad. Like we had an issue with our uh, with our hot water heater, and it had like a Honeywell valve in it that was apparently defective, and and they had known it to be a, a defective, and so like even like five years after we bought the the valve. Honeywell paid for everything, man. They paid for, like, it, it, the whole damage, like, we had, like, a leak because of it. The whole damage was, like, six grand, and they paid for all of it, you know? And so, I like Honeywell, you know? They, uh, they're yeah. legit. They actually, they, you know. I mean, long term, this, this stock will usually do well just because they're in so many fields now. And what happened? Their competitor, their main competitor is struggling. Yeah. And when their main competitor struggles, guess what? They can't do expenditures. They can't invest in research. Um, GE is still doing that because they're such a big company, but they're, they're not putting as much into their company as HON is now. Um, you can see on this drop that we got in the market, when we, we went down to 100, and man, this stock just went right back up. Like a rocket back to 150. So you can definitely tell this stock is strong. Uh, yeah, so somebody talking about USO here. USO is an eight to one reverse split. It's not actually valued any higher. They they're they're taking shares away, making the float less diluted, and so consequently, the price is going to go up. But uh, you're gonna own less shares. Like if you own ten, if you own eight shares, you're only gonna own one share. You know now, uh, and so it's gonna compensate exactly, and it's gonna be worth about approximately the same. Yeah, oil's a, a crazy investment. I'll just yeah. say that. It's, it's not my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, oil is an inevitability, you know? Or, or oil changing of the guard is an inevitability. Like, getting off of fossil fuels is going to happen eventually. And I'm not necessarily, like, anti-oil, but I, I do think that eventually we have to get off of it and it, we will get off of it eventually and i, I guess I, I just don't like the conflict of interest between large corporations trying to get us to stay on dependent on fossil fuels just for the sole reason to profit i mean you know regardless of what anybody says it's obviously not great for the for the world uh but at the same time i understand that they do give they do put out a lot of jobs and stuff like that and so it's a tough touchy topic but i try to i see both sides in the end like i said though i think i think getting off of fossil fuels is an uh, is inevitable it's going to happen eventually and we might as well start working with it and you know the big oil companies can figure it out all right man i'll bring up another sector it's actually someone that brought it up in the chat to remind me about it so i'll give him a shout out chris thank you for bringing up uh, amc um man and there's not many times I give out uh, zero, zero calls, but I'm gonna give out a zero call again. Um, I'm giving out zero calls on a GME. Um, I'm gonna give out a zero call on this AMC. Uh, zero call for me, AMC, just not gonna survive. I, I think uh, these these kind of movie theaters are just, they're gonna go bye-bye. Um, reason why, uh, there's going to be a changing in the industry and it's going to come because of the coronavirus, I feel. Um, I'm going to put up both uh, 
both kind of movie theater stocks so you guys can see them both. Uh, you got Cinemark on the left here up by $15. You got AMC up here about $5. Uh, I think these are going to go bye-bye because uh, coronavirus is going to create this feeling that we're going to start trying to be more around personal relationships and not be around public relationships at least i feel um, and what i mean by public relationships is being around certain people um, for long periods of time that you do not know um, so like that's going to a movie theater sitting in next to someone in a movie theater and watching a movie um, at the end of the day you're sitting next to someone for hours and hours of time um, so one of the things that's changing in the industry that i think is going to be big is two things so one drive through movies are going to get big again. It's going to be like the pandemic days in the old days where drive through movies actually got big and drive-in movies are actually going to get big again because you can go in your car, you can stay with the people that are in your car, you don't have to worry about getting sick, and you have some normality. You can go back to watching movies, you can go see a movie, and that's important. But then, I saw this big change in the industry and this news came out in the industry that they're going to go to pay demand movies um, that new movies that troll movie came out and with that troll movie coming out it was supposed to come out in theaters it was a kid movie and what ended up happening was universal actually just put it out there for on demand buy you can just buy it right now and yep. what they saw was they did so well in in selling this on-demand uh, movie that they said, why do we even need the movie theaters anymore? We don't need the movie theaters. Um, and AMC actually got upset because they did this. And they said they will no longer show universal movies. Mm. Uh, so this is a big battle now in the industry. Um, they, they're saying, Universal is saying that they're just going to start releasing movies on on demand. Why? Why, why? why should we not receive more money for just putting the movie straight to the consumer than going through this kind of different source that was supposed to bring more money? But what ends up happening is there's so many fees that go into putting a movie into a theater that they make more on the on demand side. So they're going to get to the point, I think they're going to get so against these theater companies that they're going to have two options to do like AMC where they say, oh, we won't show your movie or they're just going to have to say, OK, well, you can do the on demand and we'll show the movie also, um, but you'll have to give us a cut or something, kind of cut us in or something. And then what ends up happening is you're going to start slowly seeing the decline in theaters because people will stay home and watch it on their, their TVs at home. We have such high technology. Our TVs are so, um, you know, it's not the old days where we had these big old box TVs where it wasn't good quality and you didn't have good sound systems. Some sound systems and some TVs at your house are gonna be better than the movie theater. So um, yeah, I think I mean, this is definitely gonna change. Yeah, I, I think I think people are always going to go to movie theaters, and I think the reason for that is because it's not just the movie. I think people want – it's an experience. It's a date a lot of the time, right? Like people go out to the movies for dates, and, and it gets them out of the house. I think that they're also going to start offering at home as well. Um, I think when the guy was talking about AMC, I think he was more so talking about the rebound from the, the – uh, from the economy opening back up on friday and so uh, somebody called out amc like three or four days ago and said that they were going to swing trade it because the economy is opening up on friday and so i think if you look at amc in the last like three or four days it has like ripped up because of that catalyst and so i think on a short-term basis amc isn't bad in that regard i think that with the economy opening back up i think it'll probably bounce like it has and i mean i think that was a pretty a uh, good, you know, little swing trade there as well. Long term, you know, it's hard to tell because like I said, I think some people are going to always want to go out and make it an experience instead of just kind of staying at home. You know, I think, I think, I think they'll probably do both eventually where they offer the movies at home at like a high premium and then it'll be a little bit cheaper if you go out to the movie and you get popcorn and stuff like that because of the experience. But I do agree in that like movie theaters make the most money from 
uh, from concessions, from the food they serve there, over ticket prices. You know, ticket prices are negligible, but they make a, they make bank off of food, and that would kind of correlate with how I am when I go to the movie theater. I always end up buying way too much food. Uh, but it, it's tough. But yeah, long term, AMC, it'll be tough, man. Um, we'll see what happens, but. Uh, I think it might take some time, and I think on a short-term swing trade basis, like in the next like few weeks, I think AMC might go up as well, uh, a little bit more with the economy opening back up. Yeah, I think uh, you know drive-ins are gonna really start getting popular too. Um, that if there is one that's gonna survive, I think it'll be the little smaller drive-ins that are cheap and people can go to and still afford it. Um, no one's gonna be trying to. Sh- uh, shuffle out sixty dollars to go with a family to the movie theaters. Yep. I think it's, this is going to be a change, guys. The money's going to start slowing down. C- consumer consumption will slow down until we get a full change in the economy, or let's say we get the an unemployment numbers back to under two million, under four billion where it was. Uh, I think you're going to you're going to keep seeing this kind of change. And uh, we're going to get a kind of this is the presidency year. So big changes could be ahead. Uh, You know, Democrat wins big changes. So um, we're going to definitely have to pay attention and we'll take a look. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, market opens up in 50 seconds. I'm going to go over and go over the market news real quick Um, on the spy itself. Uh, Spy itself. Like I said, the spy is ripping up because of Gilead um, having that positive uh, results that came out, uh, the positive phase two and three, I think, results that came out for Gilead. We are currently at 291.70, and we're gapping up a pretty substantial amount overall overall in pre-market. Uh, it's interesting. I think we might fill the gap a little bit and pull back some, but the market, they say the economy is opening back up on Friday, and so we'll see what happens. I'm going to get everything ready real quick, and then we can trade the open. So good luck, team. Let's do this. Yesterday, was like a $300 day, $275 day. And so it was actually a really solid day yesterday. The last two days in gross, I've made over a thousand, I think. Uh, No, I made about almost a thousand. So there's the bell, guys. Good luck. Let's do this. I haven't even looked at what my account's at either. Um, If I get a pullback today in the airlines, if I get back down underneath towards $9 or 850, I might take more shares of JetBlue. But if it rips through 10, I guess I'm in it. Man, my computer sounds like it's taking off like a rocket. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that, bro? You hear that thing, man? It's loud, dude. Bro, <laughs> I enjoy it. Yeah. Every morning, it right around the open, it's mine. Right. Sometimes yeah. it's just weird. Computers are, are like a car, man. Sometimes they're just funky. They just run yeah. funky for like a week. Yeah, I mean, I got a bunch of stuff up, man. I've got Tefs. I've got a bunch of tabs on google chrome you know, zoom that's what it swim. is it's freaking chrome yeah horrible coding in chrome <laughs> hey bro don't talk about our boss man you know <laughs> uh, i used to think chrome was like one of the top boys i used to be like yeah chrome nvidia breaking down here uh let me see what else we got Spy, like I said, Spy pulling back short term, and I think this is just a, a, a psychological move down, just from the amount that we're up. Um, All right, guys, I can tell you the volume looks like it's majorly in the industrials right now. Yeah, I'm up three thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars in this account, so not too shabby. I only have about sixteen hundred dollars to go for the next two months, so I think I'll hit that. Stock showing great strength today. Uh, somewhat. Uh, S. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I know JavaScript, uh, HTML, mostly front end, a little bit of back end with Python and stuff, but. Uber pulling back to the view up. But yeah, guys, like I said, you're going to see me start to take much bigger size. Uh, 
as I have to hit that kind of quota with my profit. It's been a year since I've had this account, and uh, I got a few months to hit that, so uh, almost a year at least. Uh, and so you're gonna see me take bigger size to hit that quota. Got this, John. All right, guys, looking for HTZ to get strong today. Uh, reason why, as I talked about earlier, the cycle change. I'll be watching HTZ and CAR to get strong. CAR getting strong already. Market testing the lows. It's right around the VWAP. I might short into AMD as we get if we get a low break here under 291. I don't hate it, we just need a low break, which we might get right now. Waiting. I'm gonna short into AMD here. I'm in with 200 shares. Um, gonna try to catch it. Oof. Getting some swings here for sure though. Long off of 15s, five cent risk here, HCZ. There we go, nice breakdown. I'm gonna take half off here. Very quick move, see those. This is a big swing, both directions. So I'm relatively protected in it, but uh, we're gonna see if we get a breakdown and get that profit. I'm only holding 100 shares left though. Might get out right here, HCZ. I'm just taking a short little trade here. Trying to get my feet wet. The spot bounced at that low, which is causing mine to bounce up too, unfortunately. All right. Gotta be careful here. Here's the whole dollar, let's break under. No swingy, I'm probably about to get out. A little bit laggy here with Dicker Swim as well. All right, guys, just added on that pullback. Now holding towards 13. 13 is my out. 15, 513 is my out. Seeing car rip up, that's what's getting me interested in this one. Maybe I should have gone after car, but. I have a feeling that this one's gonna just pop up here. So I'm just buying it off the low, risking a very, very tiny amount. There's the market quickly turn. Um, we'll see if AMD follows it. I might add a little bit if I see the market break lows here. I'm gonna add another 100 shares here. Um, in with 200. See, I don't like this squeeze. If I get through 520s now, I'll add another 200 shares, guys. I like that pullback, but somewhat uncomfortable in this just from the range so far. And yeah, market's squeezing up. I don't like this. I'm gonna take half off here, profit a little bit, hold this hundred. See if we get, I like this breakdown. Take another fifty off. For this reason, I gotta, uh, I gotta get hotkeys. Maybe I have a stream deck. I was thinking about using for hotkeys. I see some traders use them. Beautiful fade here for AMD though. Yeah, I have some scripts. So I'll help you out with that, John. All right. I had already made them for tests before. I think what what you might need is more just profit, profit keys. Mm -hmm. I like profit hotkeys. 
So like, 100%. you just put out immediately a order to sell like 20 cents from my average price limit order. Yeah, for sure. I got out of uh, AMD there, uh, up 30 bucks. Um, not a bad little opening trade. Uh, I really like my ad right here. Um, as I saw, I was correlating it with the SPY and that worked really well. So uh, we'll see what else we can get, but not a bad little opening trade. I'll put Mitch up. I think he's in something, right? Yeah. All right, you gotta put your uh, trading window up. Got you, bro. There you go, guys. If it goes through the 12s, is it gonna stop me, guys? A uh, car looks good, interesting too for me for a view out bounce, but I went for this one instead. When was the last time you had a red day? Uh, last week. I lost a little bit. I think I was still up in gross, but I did I did lose some in net last week. There you go, guys. Just got stopped out. That blue pulling back to the view app there. Looks interesting. Today, energy and financials up three percent. Uh, not a commercial one, Steve. Uh, they have one, but it's just the one that they let you use uh, when you first sign up for a few weeks before you get started. With it comes with a package, basically. But you can't basic you can't just buy a paper trading platform, basically. Nice day. Right. LUV dropping here. Up and fast. I'll look to see if I can get it at VWAP 2960s. AMD ripping under lows, just broke lows. It's down to 5362. Um, Snap might be hot today. Same Facebook go up. Market rebounding here. It's at the 291s, testing 291s right now. not this song. I gotta delete this song from the playlist. It's absolutely ridiculous. Get out of here, song. Like in car and LUV for VWAP bounces, but LUV stopped right before my VWAP. AMD heading down there. Significant amount. Uber pulling back to the VWAP, CTC pulling back to the VWAP 2, NAT pulling back to the VWAP. 
uh, AMD breaking low still. Spy is bouncing at the VWAP, still testing 291. It's really, um, we'll see if it breaks there or not. If it breaks there, we might start to see some like red to green moves uh, in the overall market. Nvidia is breaking highs up there over 296.50. Um, so it's looking a little bit stronger now, but AMD is going the other direction. It looks like MU and NVIDIA are following each other some. AMD is just going another direction. Remember guys, hit that like and subscribe button. We got almost 400 people in here. Hit that like button right now. We got 50 likes. Let's bring that number up to over 100. Show support. We're not experts or gurus here. We're just a free resource for traders to get together and learn stuff. And so hit that like and subscribe button if you appreciate that. We day trade live on stream every weekday morning for free. All right, I'm seeing... Uh some HCZ still breaking down cars, um, kind of holding the support, but it's definitely pressuring. So be careful with that one. Boeing sideways right now. We'll see if it breaks uh, 138. MU going opposite direction here of what I see text, and it's going big. Maybe yeah, the MU. There. No, go ahead. No, go ahead, you're good. I was just going to say, MU and, a and NVIDIA are kind of following each other today. AMD is just going the opposite direction. It's just been heading down. Um, All right. An interesting level here, though, is to see what the SPY does. If the SPY rips up and breaks uh, 291s, uh, 291.50s, and the high of the day at 291.60, then we might get a rip up in a lot of these moves. With MU and uh, NVIDIA, though, I might look for some pullbacks. Um, Hey, thanks sports. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Bubba. I'm trying to get in car here. Ah, I just missed it, man. Just bounced up there to seventies. Tried to get in there at fifties. It went too fast. I'm in Boeing with 30 shares. Boeing pulling a red degree move. It looks like squeezing up. Just a very small position here with a few shares of Boeing. Never traded it before, so just kind of getting my feet wet with it, and we'll see. Um, I'm betting on it continuing if we can. I'll put my window up real quick so you guys can see it. Never really traded it before, so I'm not super used to it. But I'll let it test down to here. Thanks for the sub, Tim. Welcome in. Appreciate it. All right. Well, not a bad little rip here. I'm going to take half off. And I'm going to hold my little 15 shares. See if we get a much larger move over and hold over 139, ideally. Uh, it doesn't look like it. get out here uh take my little 15 shares off appreciate the sub don welcome man appreciate appreciate that market That's ripping up break out market ripping up here it's at 291 still testing that 291.50 level we talked about if the market can break 291.60 it's going to drag a lot of stuff up here and i might get back into ba uh, with a little bit larger size this time I, you know, breaking loose. Nah, maybe 
I should have gotten back in. Bank of America on that, that short-term bounce. But here's the market kind of squeeze here. Right. Re-entry here in HTZ. Yeah, I just jumped in with 50 shares of Boeing. Sub Dwayne, welcome man, appreciate the sub bro. Hey dude. Yeah. Look I'm in Moon. I know, I see that. Good job, buddy. I think I'm left in Moon. Yeah, moons are good, huh? You got a bunch of them, right? And I get God, right? Good job, bud. Not liking Boeing here, obviously. I'm gonna let it test that level down there, but this is a bad spot here for it. Huge seller for me at five tenths. Yeah, I got out of Boeing right there. Maybe I could have waited for it to bounce off the VWAP, but I would rather keep it a little break even. Huge seller right here. You guys see this five ten, twelve thousand. Put it up there. Yeah, I got you up. I'm out of mine. volume that went through there so you got to be careful right, here goes the market squeezing up testing highs like car push up also some orders I don't want filled out just trying to push it up on NVIDIA, $60 loss. Um, Buddy, you got another man. Great job, man. Yeah, I'll play with you after this. After I work, okay? Deal. I've been practicing, I've been practicing 
So after you're done, can you win this for me? Uh, when I'm doing stream? Here, not right now, buddy. I'm, I'm doing my stream no, right mean, now. Like, after you're done with Maybe later, buddy, okay? But you gotta let me work right now. Alright? Thank you, bud. My son, ladies and gentlemen. about break even guys um and you ripping market pushing up some but yeah as you can see i'm down like five bucks on the day we'll come back Alright guys, trying to get this to break out through the VWAP and continue on up. If it breaks down through 507s, we're just going to get out. Really looking also for car on the left hand side here to break out also. Hmm. Here's where should we see that surge to 520. I am seeing some bids start stacking up here. It's a good sign. Let's see if it can go ahead and push through 520s. Also like this one to the left for a potential VWAP bounce. Key is the risk is getting tight. Spider on his face, man. That sounds terrible. Sounds like a bad morning for that dude, huh? I hate spiders. <laughs> All right, guys, don't want it to break that low right there. It breaks that low. I'm making a little bit on uh, MU's breakout right here. I'm gonna try to let this last hundred shares test the 4750 level. It's got 20,000 shares to go through there, five tenths. Let me just get out here. I'm up 20 bucks on the day, slight, kind of grinding my way back. Appreciate the sub, Michael. Thank you, man. There's a big push and snap. It came, um, you know, Facebook, I think, is leading that group of pairs it's facebook snap pinterest those three have a tendency of moving together
big breakout in MU. Maybe I should have held on to it a little bit. I'm going to take a CGC. It's been a while since I've done a rebound bounce setup, but I'm looking at CGC now. I'm going to jump in with the 300 shares here um, for CGC. Uh, and we'll see if we get a rip up or not, but it looks like a rebound, what I call a rebound bounce setup for CGC. It's got a little bit of a spread, but... Uh, all right, guys, just added a little bit there at 510. Now my average is 400 at 504s. I'm holding to a 506 stop out. And like a good little profit target would be up here to 21 for a CTC. drop probably gonna get out soon here like that little push up bought a little bit more holding the 506 putting some stops there just to make sure I hold to my level 505 is my stop but I'm gonna let this try to break out here through the VWAP yeah I got out of mine um... Kind of a swingy day, but only down 10 bucks. We'll see. Uh, I'll probably eventually. Snap pushing there, guys. Square pushing up. One that's gone straight up today, John, you might want to keep an eye on for is AMAT. That thing has gone straight up today. Yeah, for sure. It's too high up there, though. I've. Yeah, I'd rather now, pull back. Yeah. And now it's like <laughs> yeah, hindsight 2020, you know. Yeah. Let me get it at 52. <laughs> yeah, right. I ain't, I ain't buying that thing right now, man. You know. <laughs> hey, you guys just saw a little spike there in car. Uh, our trade's looking really well now. There you go, guys. Seeing these comebacks and these rentals. Let's see if we can get through the 20s. The 20s would get us a really nice gain, and then we'll take some off there. We're looking for this last ad to hold here. We don't want it to crack down here. If it breaks down, we just got to get out. Yeah, I don't like that downturn in the market. We're going to have to see if we get a bounce at the VWAP, but we got a few breaks here. Some definitely some ads there. Let's see if it holds these five tens. That's what I really want to see happen here, and then just extend to five twenties. Actually, hold towards that 510 low. Yeah, I mostly trade stocks. Some buys coming in there, looking good for us. Yeah, guys, remember right. hit that. Go ahead. Catch up with the chat here. Catch up with the chat. Remember, guys, hit that like and subscribe button, team. We do this live every day right here on YouTube, so show your support. Hit that like and subscribe button, guys.
what's going on traders how we doing out there hope you guys are enjoying the day sticking to your progress and sticking to your systems that's what gets us our profit guys let's stick to it we got this looking really good with car going up there to 1780s There you go, guys. Now we're up there to 518s. This should get to 520s. Let it get there first before I take first profit. back there I'm trying to let it break through this 520s here there's a big bidder here just got put up there at 517 you see this 480 it should hold it up there and push it on up to the 520s let's see if it does that a little bit of a pull back there when he got started to get filled Not liking that guy is gonna take a little bit off here. Got blocked there with my stop order in place, but I'm trying to see if it bounces here. If not, I'll just cut some off. I'd like to see his car break out through 18. There you go. That's a good lift for car at least. Anybody that's in car, uh, that's a good little profit area. Some big sellers here at 518. Mm -hmm. Hey, appreciate the sub, Raphael. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it, man. Welcome, dude. Hit that subscribe button, guys. How many likes we got in here? <laughs> Square ripping up there for sure. Uh, look for the other one that we talked about, PayPal. It's probably strong too. They, they run pairs, so. There you go, guys. Now up there to the 521 area. We're going to take 200 off here. Make sure we pay ourselves. That's always important, guys. Can't stress that enough. Too many traders. Get into the green, don't pay themselves. Make sure you're paying yourself at least a little bit here. Now I'm only down $2 and I'm trying to let this work up there to the 30s. We'll take another little bit off there. And then from there on, we can just let the trade work. What's up, Hip Hop Anonymous? Hey, nice David, welcome bro. What do you think AMD will bottom out? I don't know. Yeah, not enough likes, man. We got 88 likes, guys. We got 360 people in here. Hit that like and subscribe button, guys. You know you want to. Don't hate. Appreciate. You know? Hit that like, guys. Nailing that HTZ today. What is AMD doing anyway? I mean, I don't hate it. 
hate AMD here. Just I, I think it's going to be a, a lot of the time influenced by the market right here. All right, guys, taking a little bit off as we're struggling to break through 525s. That is a resistance, so I took some off there just to make sure that we're going to get a profit for the day. Now put a stop, break even on the rest, let it work. All right, let's go look for another trade now. You guys see me set the stop up $22 in there at 507. I'm gonna go ahead and let this one work now. Nvidia, AMD starting to break down, look weak. Uh, so it happens with the rest here, but. Just in HTZ, what you saw up there was a car next to it. I wasn't in car, but I was using it as a pairs trade. <laughs> yeah, it happens, man. I'll stay in it though, because it could get that lift at VWAP. So I put a stop there at 509. We're in at 507. Really, our early entry was 503. We just added and added and added, and we got our average up to 507. How's the cruise lines doing? See a big dip here. All right, gonna try to scout this move here off the 90s here, just in case this just gets smacked. CCCL trying to let it come back down towards the support we got 1567 available and then below that 1550s careful because if this one doesn't break down it's probably going to flip and go long so just got to make sure that I hold to my level uber bouncing off the view up looks doesn't look bad
breakout comes after this. A pairs trade is when you use one stock in the same sector uh, to influence or to get like an idea of what another stock is going to do, right? So like, uh, I a lot of times I'll pairs trade the spy and tech because they follow each other, at, you know, a decent amount of the time. And so like if the spy has a huge rip down and like breaks lows, I'll short tech uh, on a short term basis. Uh, but it, it just depends. Yeah, what it is is relationship trading. Right. That's what I would call it. All right, put a stop here because it should just slam down. If it pops up, I want to get out of the trade. Yeah, I mean, I'm a pretty small day for me. I'm down $33, guys, so I'm just kind of horsing around with a few scalps. Uh, nothing too crazy. I guess the 91 will pull me out. AMD with a quick reversal here. Look at that. AMD ripping up, about to break highs, it looks like. One that looks strong, LUV in the airlines. Huge support at 30. Airlines index is hitting the VWAP. Uh, Steve, you could be in both at the same time. It would probably give you better exposure. Um, a lot of times I don't have the buying power to buy both. Um, so uh, what I necessarily do is I just go ahead and just buy one and watch the other. Um, but you could buy both. That's what some re uh, relationship traders do. Um, but they usually have a tendency of going harder in one and thinking that one's leading, one's lagging. That's what it usually is, guys. All right, guys, I got stopped out there, wicked up. I'm fine with that. If it comes and breaks down again, that's cool. We only gave up $11 there, so. Still think this could break down, but I'm just gonna wait for the spy to make a move now. I just took a little scalp on MU on this rip up here, but nothing too major right now. Uh, made like a little bit. Right, car breaking out there. Perfect relationship. Now I should see an HD breakout that goes ahead and shows me confirmation that the sector overall is strong today. We can move up to VWAP for our, our stop out. Looking for this to start getting a lift, break the 15 minute trend line. I'd be through the 25s, getting up there to the 35s.
SDC getting in. I'll definitely check it out. That's Smile Club moving. Yeah, SDC's getting uh, kind of a, I would think this is a short seller squeeze. To me, that's what it looks like. Just too much volume with the movement. I don't know if there's a big news in this one. I'll have to look it up, but. Stock holding the $7 really well. I didn't quite get my entry on MU that I wanted. Guys, energy is up four percent. Basic materials up three and a half. Um, we got technology right behind that at three point four, followed by financial services and cyclicals. Um, the only one in the red for the day would be utilities. Look at this car, man. Probably would have been the better one to trade, but it is the rangy too, so. That happens sometimes, but this one's still pushing up there. Now, past the high of the day. Yeah, that one looks nice. Okay, there's Jonathan coming through. Good job, Jonathan. SDC claiming patent infringement on another company. How about weed stocks? I traded one today. I didn't really have the best results with it. Uh, lower liquidity today, for sure, for cannabis. Uh, Daniel, that would be a long topic about which one looks better but we don't really like to give you which one to buy um, we could talk about which pot stock looks the strongest uh, but that's more of a question for pre-market or aftermarket or when we're a little calm down i'll try to look into it later on for you see what's are looking good but most of them they had a big dip in march that you could have got into so it's going to be hard to beat the biggest investors now they bought up that March dip. getting really strong again John which one ENPH it's back to being a uh, quite a rocket nice man it's that been a while since I like, traded that one yeah it moves like two or three dollars and it's in the forty dollar price point so it's a big range Carmela Carmela Killed it. I made a little bit of gain on MU, up $32 on the day. Uh, maybe you should have held some for this high of the day test, actually. But I 
Well, we got a second though, guys. If anybody wants to use the same platform that we do, uh, it's a really cheap option for new traders. Like a lot of times people ask me like, how do I get started for cheap in the market, right? Like how can I start day trading for cheap? And, and a lot of times what happens with new traders is that they end up saving up thousands of dollars. And what you really want to understand is that you're probably going to lose your first account. Uh, it, it's definitely the majority of traders lose their first few accounts certainly uh, day traders specifically and so if you really want to get started day trading you don't want to risk a lot in the beginning because there's going to be a learning curve and it's going to take you know on average you know some time to learn how to day trade and so with that i think the packages we use make a lot of sense uh, they're through TradeNet, and basically the way it works is they have these different packages uh, they're all educational packages so it comes with a course and a demo account and access to their chat room and then you get to apply and you know as long as you haven't gotten too many before you should be approved and once you're approved they allow you to day trade their account and so you become a contractor for them kind of like a 1099 contractor i don't think they send you a 1099 because they're overseas but um and once that happens they let you trade their accounts and the base package that you get for 399 is a fourteen thousand dollar funded account with no pdt rule and shorting ability and it operates like a prop firm and so you can withdraw your funds once per month and you know obviously you can only withdraw any your profit over the 14k they give you and there's a 70 30 split and so if you make a thousand dollars net they keep 30 percent of that which is 300 bucks if you turn it into 15k from 14k they're going to keep 300 you keep 700 and then there's a 700 dollars max loss but again guys i think if you think about your other options this is the cheapest way to get started you know it's a really cheap option you're probably going to lose this account as well to be honest but it's just a lot cheaper to lose a 399 account than it is to save up thousands and risk thousands as a new trader and again if you think you're gonna be that outlier that ends up just making a bunch of money on their first account you probably won't and it's all about having the reasonable expectations with it but again I think the fact that you get so much buying power for cheap you can short there's no PDT rule it's one of the ways you can get around it I think it, it makes a lot of sense for new traders specifically so that they don't have to risk you know that those thousands of dollars like they usually do and instead you can just you know risk three three ninety nine four hundred bucks and not you know kind of extend yourself in the market when you first get started and i think that's a very wise move for new traders um obviously uh we make a commission if you sign up through us so we're biased in their favor obviously but if you want to check it out there's the link well they're going to exit the trade for you there's a 700 hundred dollar max loss drew and so they're going to exit the trade for you uh, if you go under over $700 in losses. So like if you're in a trade and you're losing $701, they're gonna automatically exit that trade for you when your account's closed. Uh, so they, they have protective measures to where, you know, you're gonna only lose $700 or, or less or they're gonna close your account down. But again, I mean, you know, for 400 bucks, you're essentially getting to trade 14,000 you know, in buying power. And I think that is a huge advantage for new traders. Trying to see if I'm gonna get some lagging momentum here in Mbot. Uh, seeing this INO really shoot up there towards 370s, uh, 1370s from 1320. Um, trying to see if this Mbot's gonna pull back here towards the VWAP, but it might just rip out here through eight. So I'm looking for a pullback to VWAP, but let's see what we get. What I would really like to see is a bunch of volume get in this stock, but I'm not seeing that. Market tripping up, breaking highs, guys. Scalping a little bit off at the top on MU here. Um, it's gonna be a little bit more. Ideally, I'd like to see a high of the day test up here, but I might not get it. And that's okay if I don't, I'm already up uh, in this trade. I think it's going to depend on what the market does here as well. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. I'm going to take another half off here. Hold this last little hundred shares. See if we can uh, 
continue to ride up this high of the day break momentum in the market here see if amd can maybe break highs again um and then i'll unload the rest if we get that hands over the cover button though because if we get a rejection here i'm just going to exit soon and keep it easy But if the market squeezes up and AMD gets a push up, then it should be good for me. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna scale out anymore. I'm just gonna take the rest off into some strength if we get it. I'm gonna wait for that strength, potential strength at least. Not really liking that INO too much just because there's not a lot of volume that came in there at the bottom. I think there would be bag buyers, they would be in the millions. You saw bag buyers come in here at the at the gates, but daily chart shows a big support at thirteen oh six. Below that we'd get down to maybe twelve dollars, so Alright, I ended up unloading the rest of my MMU shares. Up 50 something bucks on the day. Not bad, I'll take that any day. See if we can find any other good solid setups here. Market breaks highs again. I might long some more moves. It just depends. Could be a fade. I'm gonna back off of it. Not really liking the chart that much. HDZ looks like we're finally going to get our breakout that we're looking for. Just through the 25s. Car kept going. It's a good sign. AMD's testing that high of the day. It's got a lot of volume to come in. HDZ, 10,000 shares at 520, 4,000 shares at 520, 1,800 shares at 525. Now. A nice little breakout here on our MU. I'm gonna see if we can move up to test the whole dollar here, holding 200 shares left. Nice, I'm gonna get out another 100. Hold this last 100 to see if we can break 48 here. There we go, nice. I'm gonna get out the rest there at the 48 break. Nice little breakout there, up 86 on the day. Finally kind of getting into my rhythm here. Uh, but not too bad. Catching some market momentum as we break highs, which is always good. Trying to get hungry here. <laughs> <laughs> the stomach growl. Man, that car stock today really did well. Doing leading the sector for sure. PDT leading rules on. rental, rental and leasing services. And says the PDT rule is unconstitutional. Yeah, I kind of agree. I do agree. It, it is, man. It, it's it's the, the real the reality is, and the SEC might hate me for saying this, but it's worse for new traders. It's it's way worse. You're basically ensuring that a new trader has to risk twenty five grand in the beginning as a brand new day trader. Like it's unnecessary. Like they say it's to protect a new trader. It ends up making it worse because most new traders lose their first few accounts. And so if you make somebody save up 25 grand for their first day trading account, you're just making them take on way too much risk. You know, when they lose that, they're gonna be devastated, man. You know, but what if you let them actively day trade with a small account, they're gonna slowly understand risk management and, and be okay with it. All right, guys, um, I can tell you guys right now, um, all the stocks that got beat up are doing really well today. You look at the cruise line, the cruise lines, you look at the airlines, uh, you look at the hotel industry, you look at different stocks. The investors are getting in. Um, at least that's what it's showing on the on the charts. Uh, LUV had a huge support at 30 on the daily chart. It broke that and now has created 54 million shares traded today two days in a row at that support do you think that's people that are shorting 
LUV? I don't think so. I think these are big time investors trying to get that bottom of the chart. Scalping MU here. I just made a, a nice little win. I'm going to take a little bit more off here. Uh, I got the pullback right when I said that. Um, it's okay. Still up. Nice. Up. Uh, I'm going to get out the rest here. $104 up on the day. Um, slowly grinding it up. Uh, we'll see what else we can get. Might buy some LUV today. Should have thought about getting into it before 30, though. My Jet Blue doing well today. We'll look for that one to continue on up. Earnings coming out next week. Look at HTZ stack up here, John. I don't know if you have my screen up, but man, crazy stack up on the bid. Yeah, I don't trust the level two. Yeah, dude, there was like four or five different uh, routes with over 500. Yeah, I don't trust that. Um, I, I don't like level two. You see, you're filling up there. They're filling up on the bid side, so that's a good sign for us. Um, if you look at the look at this volume that's gone through at the 25s and 28s, there's a lot of traders stuck up here. The greed is good. They're buying the highs. Let them push it for me. Right, for sure. That's what happens there. And so you don't want to be greedy too, because I could add right here. Next thing you know, it drops the VWAP, stops me out. A lot of times when you get into these positions where you're in decent, decent kind of probability, don't ruin your probability by changing your average price. Right. For sure. See a lot of traders make that mistake. I know it's fun to add and make a bigger win, but trust me, we've all been there. When you add, 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 and the next thing you know, the trade goes completely against you. Right. For sure. All right, guys, as we break through the 30, I'm going to go ahead and take some off here. I'll take another 100 off and let the rest of the trade continue on for the breakout. Yeah, I got back in MU at the, the top. I'm, I'm probably about to get out. I'm holding this one close to break even, though. Just trying to see if we get some more upward momentum with the spy that drags MU up. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting the opposite. They're throwing it up on the ask. Let's see if it gets through this 530s. If not, I'll take some off. I'm just going to get out and take that little scalp there, put Mitch back up. Uh, up, up 120 on the day. Uh, my commissions are about a dollar fifty in and a dollar fifty out uh, uh, fling. There you go. A little bit past 30s here. No, a lot of volume coming in up here. Here you go, 31. All right, guys, I'm gonna take some off right here. Took a little bit more now. Now we're up about 47 on the name. Uh, unrealized of 71, um, but I, I never focus on that number. Only focus on your realized number. A lot of times we get too focused on the total PL and the unrealized, where really at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is realized. All right. If it gets to 36, next level up there is to the 40s. And we're gonna hold to 35 from that point on. I wanted to break out to the 550s. Um, that would be like the ultimate move, but gotta let it get there first.
Oof, big rip on AMD. Mm, quick pullback. Market dipping down. Did something come out? guys looking for this to continue on up Lots of volume coming in here at 34s and 35s, mainly just 34s, so they're not throwing it up on the ask. There's a lot of volume there, so the bids are getting filled right now. Hey guys, as I see uh, HTZ try to break out here through the 540s, um, now up about $50 on the name. I'm looking for it to break through the 40s, get on up there maybe to the 550s. Uh, like always guys, if you guys wanna check out the platform that John and I use on these streams, go check out TradeNet. It's a high quality platform. This is what you guys see me using here on the right hand side. Uh, we use TEFs to execute the trades. That's the platform you're seeing here. Um, it's really quick. You can even do market buys. We don't recommend that with any other uh, platform, but uh, you guys see me even having the market ready there. Um, what I always like about TradeNet is the combination, guys. It's that it lets you trade as much as you want. You don't have to worry about if you want to go short, I need to borrow shares or something like that. And for the beginner trader, they give you access to learning material and chat rooms, um, also a demo account. You know, I feel like they really support the beginner trader. So if you guys want to go ahead and check out TradeNet, um, all this for less than $400 definitely makes sense risk and reward wise. Check it out. Hit the link. Um, do your own research like always, guys. Um, it has to go ahead and benefit you. But that's what we always recommend. Yeah, there's a link in the chat if you want to check it out, team. Okay, I, I went all the way up there when you wanted you, oh really? Yeah. Good job, buddy. That's how I got so many moons. I would have given it. That's how you got so many moons in Mario. <laughs> uh, you saw me, guys. I, I took a little trade on MU there, uh, scalping the top. Uh, Whoa! Up uh, about 160 on the day. Uh, good job, bud. Here, pound it. I, I already got two moons. That's right. Who's your best bud? That's right. That's my son. He's cool. He's playing uh, Super Mario Odyssey. Okay, next stop is the 44s, guys. I want to see if volume comes in there. That'll show me that it's going to break through the 50s. This time we could play and you could be Mario and I could be Mario's hat. Okay, maybe. All right. Yeah, I'll talk to you when I'm done working. Okay, bud. Good bid thrown up right there on the bid side, 100. Good looking good on the bid side. Let's see if this pushes up now through the 44s. All right, I'm not trying to break through the 44s. We're not going to get greedy either. Uh, yes, app. Hip Hop Anonymous. If you guys don't know, app is Hip Hop Anonymous. You know. Here it goes. Trying the 44s. It, it, it. Here, buddy, I can't right now, dude. I'm walking. Oh, I can't, dude. I can't. Um, maybe later after this, okay? Um. App says, so all I have to put down is $400 to start trading with TradeNet. So, so 
you, when you pay for a package, it's not a deposit into like a brokerage. Like it's you're paying for an educational package, uh, and then you know a lot of the time they'll partner with you and make you a contractor, and you know then that's when the 70/30 split comes in and all that stuff. Um, but yes, it, but it's not a deposit. Is basically what I want people to understand. Alright guys, this is when I start looking for reversals, so you could see momentum start switching. Um, this is around the time that I normally start looking for reversals. Yeah, Isaiah, the news in the strong of the market I think is strictly off the Gilead. Positive, cons uh, people are thinking it's opening up, people think maybe a drug company comes out with a cure. If that happens, we'll be back in the 300s. So, uh, so what happened 13 minutes ago, uh, right around when this, the market started to squeeze up, we did have some numbers that came out. Um, today, a few things have happened in the last hour. Uh, we had that Gilead news early this morning, which wasn't in the last hour, but pending home index for March was 88.2. Uh, we had U.S. pending sales change was minus 20.8 percent. We had U.S. pending home index for March 88.2. Uh, then we had Lufthansa, Swiss Federal Council proposed Euro 1.5 billion state-backed loan guarantees. Um, U.S. EIA weekly crude Cushing uh, was 3.6374. Uh, U.S. EIA weekly refining utility was 2% versus the expected minus 0.7%. Um, US EIA weekly crude production was 12.1 million. Airlines breaking out. You should try to see the Carnival breaking out. Um, maybe RCL breaking out. Yep, and CLH breaking out. It's a change changing the investors going to the the beat up stocks why does my hat look like that you can you can see how the investors have been stacking in with their dailies and weekly charts and another important thing that that has happened in those beat up stocks is they had weeks and weeks of support so at least you had a measurement of risk if you were a long-term trader. What's the weird song, Kenny? There's a few weird songs. There's one which is, uh, it's called the Yeehaw Slap. You know what the funny part is, guys? I can't hear the music. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Yeehaw Slap, guys. So we, we can all have a vote on it and end this debate right now. Do you or do you not like the Yeehaw Slap? I'm playing it right now. It's not that bad. I'm in with a little bit of MU here on this bounce. Um, 300 cheers, see if we get a bounce at the whole dollar right here. Quick bounce, if not I'm gonna jump out fast. All right, traders, I didn't wanna continue going to the 50s, so we're gonna to have to hold to 535s because we could see reversals around these times. testing the whole dollar oh, All right, guys, setting, a, setting a stop to get out of this if it breaks 535 I have it set at 534 if it continues on up it gives us more profit if it breaks down we'll take 70 70 dollars from the trade that's that's a great trade for us
remember this one we were down 30 to begin with so essentially we've already taken 77 dollars from the trade so i can't really be upset at all Probably about to get out. Once we hit 96, I kept it a $20 loss and just got out of there. A little bit less than $20, about a $17 loss. Still up 140 on the day. I just didn't like that move. We might bounce right here at this resistance or this support line that I drew, but I love it all the way from Ireland. <laughs> hey, shout out, shout out to David in Ireland. <laughs> So did you guys like the song I just played? Oh, my bad. I always like. I always wanted to go to Ireland. I don't know about you. Castles? What? Yeah. What? Castles everywhere. That's all I. I've never been. I just imagine there, there to be castles everywhere, and everybody's just walking, walking everywhere with beer in their hand. That's all I imagine. Like green beer. You know, green dark beer. You know, that's what a picture Ireland does. Conor McGregor posters everywhere. You know. Hey, Lulu. We, we love to call out for C, CAPR. I'll put it up for you. Uh, just try not to uh, double or triple up messages. Um, it's an easy way to kind of get in, put in some time out and get, get banned. banned. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just wanted to give you a uh, kind of a lookout. You're not a bad, uh, yeah. you're not a bad deterrent to the, the chat a lot of the time. So yeah. just wanted to just let you know about it. We don't mind you put it up, put it up. Uh, even say this stock is moving this amount percentage but um, repeating messages just gets the chat really clogged up yeah there's no need and if we don't get to it like it, it listen if you want to repeat the same thing like once every like two to three minutes that's fine but just clouding up the entire chat bar you can't do that you know and i get it like like i said we love you you know but don't do that all right, guys, I'm out of HTZ, guys. Got out there on the pullback there. I'm okay to get out there. It could continue to 550s, but you can't be greedy. I'm a day trader. I'll take there. Um, we were really down $30 to begin the day on this stock, so I took about $103 on the trade. Um, I'll take $103 on that trade. That's a great trade. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting to the point where I might start hanging it up. Uh, like I said, I am up. Uh, let me see what I'm up. hundred and forty dollars on the day not too shabby i'll take that uh solid day Shoo, look at this breakout in cccl it's carnival, right? Yeah, man. It's broken out today from 16 up there to 1660. Really held that 16. This thing's really made, making a move since $12. Has the same look as some of the kind of the bigger airlines where it bottomed out, bottomed out. And I just put a big weekly candle. That's a big bullish look. Um, who knows if these are going to last, but they're definitely getting some investors' interest. For sure. Tuning in from Maui. Man, Tristan, I was supposed to come out to Maui. I'm still kicking myself. I didn't buy my Maui tickets. Wowie. Uh, <laughs> had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> the market kind of tested highs. So we'll see what we get. Man, Tristan, don't stay too long. Go hit the beach. It's probably late there, though. It's probably like 8 p.m. I wonder what time it is over there. I've been trading for two years, three years. You know? Three years now?
Oh, also, guys, uh, if anybody wants to use uh, trade ideas, super legit scanners, really customizable, and they allow you to do a lot of cool stuff with them. You can build your own scans and strategies and stuff like that with these scanners, and I think they are super valuable to new traders uh, and you know experienced traders alike. Just again, because they allow you to basically see when stuff is moving in the market, which can be very very valuable. And so, if you want to check that out, there's the link. Um, I'll go over. Uh, I might jump in uh, MU a little bit here. Um, hold on, guys. Here, I'll put it up in a second. Uh, it's kind of a quick trade. I'm going to take some a little profit. And then. Uh, let me put this up. Oh, I got a chance. Which one's having a really good day is aluminum. I got out. Uh, Sorry about that. I oh, know you're good. Uh, I got out there on MU. I, I didn't like this test at this support level. You can see the support level I've been trading off of, which is this level here. I'm still up $180 on the day, uh, so I was able to catch some profit with it, but uh, but not too shabby so far. This is my PO right now. Definitely over trading a little bit, but I've made about uh, $300 from MU. It looks like I've lost more than I've won, but I've actually won more than I've lost. I've just traded the same stocks a bunch. So, uh, commissions are going to be a factor today, though. Um, definitely over traded some, but at the same time, I'm still green. All right, guys, some stocks leading in the technology sector is actually Groupon. Groupon doing better today. Uh, it's getting some investors that probably were in at one dollar to look good today. Um, it's really, really this is the cheap stock now. Um, some people were thinking Groupon was going to go out of business um, with all this shutdown. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't looking that hot the other day, man. <laughs> yeah, it definitely wasn't. I can say that too. Just looking around now for stocks, call them out for you guys. Uh, up 11 percent on the day is ENPH, man. Like a rocket, straight up there from forty-five to forty-eight dollars today. Yeah, I'm scalping MU at this this quadruple bottom here. Um, cheaper stock that's been going up with energy, AXTI. Let me get out the rest break even there. Uh, Two hundred nine dollars on the day. Like I said, still kind of grinding it up. I was about to be done too, but. I noticed this quadruple bottom there and started to attack it. We actually just got a break of the quadruple bottom, quadruple bottom now. Um, you like those those big bottoms, John? I like quadruple bottoms, and I cannot lie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> cannot blame you, brother. <laughs> All right, guys. It's looking like a reversal in car. I like that last rejection that we got there. Um, so I might take a trade here in car on the reversal side. Yeah, I got you up. Um, let me check something. Pricing not matching, so let me check something out of here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Internet froze up here. You just gotta log back in a bit. Yeah. It was still in too. It was still in. It was just giving me some issues. There you go. All right, guys. Like I said, team. One of the ways we could do this, like I, I don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong, I know I'm going to burn up a lot of commissions today, but commissions on TEFs are actually pretty cheap. It's 0 .006 cents per share, and they have a few fees. Oh, man, fees. look at that. I got it, though. I got it, guys. Woo Just took half of it off. Nice. I see that drop. You saw that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Got to be careful with those markets. Yeah careful guys i saw a massive change in direction there in car massive change in the market be careful what was that 
Yeah, man. I don't know. Some some type of catalyst came out. Yeah, I'm you saw that. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, oh but, man. But no, guys. So uh, yeah, one of the cheap ways to do it is like, like I said, it's one of the ways I can get around everything is because it's just really cheap. It's point zero zero six cents per share in commissions, and there's a few fees that go along with it. But uh, it's objectively cheap, and it's one of the cheaper ways you can get started day trading. And, and like I said, it you know the base package is three ninety nine. There's other more expensive packages if you were interested in those. Like I have the pro package, which cost about eight grand, uh, but it gives me a ton of buying power to trade with. Um, and again, it's just objectively cheap. You know, it, of course you're not going to get free commissions like U.S. regulated platforms. But there's no PDT rule and you can short. And I think that's a huge advantage, especially when you consider it comes with the course, a demo account, access to their chat room. And then you get to apply and, and you know, if you're approved, you get 14K to, to trade with, with for 400 bucks with no PDT rule. And I think that edge is pretty valuable in my opinion in the market. Um, and so if you wanna check that out, I'll post this link in chat. Good way to help support our free content. Um, you know, everything we put out there is free. Uh, we don't charge for anything. And so this is all good ways to help me you know keep the stream free and supplement our trading you know in that regard man what a move yeah, i got out i took a little 12 dollar loss in mu but negligible i think crazy flip there in car can tell you what guys I was expecting a reversal was not expecting this right, guys just took a little bit off of it just to pay ourselves up to forty dollars now we're up over pretty much a hundred dollars on the day um, I can let the rest of the trade work at my entry price just hit a stop I'm gonna put the stop a little bit under me because I don't want to lose it just in case this shoots on up there to the resistance stop placed at 1838 another little bit on MU here uh, scale out see if we can hold the rest to test the whole dollar um, I like this little breakout here there you go uh, news came out missed leasing payments on those cars that's gonna be a big news yeah I'm gonna hold it guys I'll hold the rest of the shares. We hit under 95 here for uh, MU. I'm getting out the rest. Ideally, I'd like to see it push over 48. Yeah, I'm gonna get out there. So 225 up in one day. Great job, team. Way to put it up there in the chat. You guys helping each other out. Not only helping me, but helping each other out. That's always important. Yeah, I like that drop for car, man. It's crazy, too, because I saw I, I wanted to get in there at 45. It dropped to 41, and I'm glad I didn't hesitate there. I didn't tell myself, hey, two or three cents is too important here. I was only going to risk up to the 60. So I went boom and I knocked into it and man, did it drive down immediately. Now the platform's called TEFS, T-E-F-S, Mitch. Like I said, you can check it out at that link, um, but yeah, it's, it's called TEFS, T-E-F-S. Uh, two days ago, um, they were getting uh, kind of a bear, bearish rating. 
and now this news is really going to hit it. Scalping a little bit more for Mimu here. All right, I got a good article on that one. I'm just gonna put it up in the chat. All right, guys. Let's see if we can get through the 1750s. Shorting Emmy this time, uh, getting it, get out the rest there and just finish it off. Up 266 on the day. Uh, I don't think I've had a losing trade in like five trades, six trades. It's been a while. Uh, the last 45 minutes or so. Um, mostly been, once I found, basically my system and the way it works is like I look for stocks that correlate well and that are kind of in my groove for the day and then I just keep attacking them. Um, and so what you'll see me is you'll see me experiment with a few different stocks uh, after the bell rings and then once I kind of find one that Has an edge for the day like that. I have an edge with on that specific day I just keep hammering it over and over and over again. Um, and so today that stock is MU and uh, As you can see, I mean you can see my P&L here, but you can see I'm up $340 alone just on MU once I found my groove with the specific stock and so Commissions are going to be larger today, but it's still going to be a few hundred dollars net, um, which is great. You know, I'll take that. All right, guys. So affecting car is car. We know is Avis. Avis said in this article, um, they released Wednesday that they expect 400 million in operating cash burned in April followed by 250 million in May and 150 million in June. This is a lot of cash being burned by Avis. I'm gonna find out exactly how much cash they have right now. Market reversing here is squeezing back up some um, after after a little dip there, and so we're going to start to see a following move in a lot of these other stocks where they follow the market up some here. Uh, we'll see if the market pushes up test highs. I don't really have a bias in direction, but if we get a high break, uh, I might take a little bit more. Twenty-five. You're a boss. Thank you, man. Uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, have, I hope everybody understands like the logic I have with like my trading, and then you know, with scalping, I think that's the logic you need to have, which is that you know. You need to, the first part of the day, you should be finding stocks that have edge. And then once you find them, just attack those. Um, it's not going to be the same stocks every day, but it'll be similar, you know. Beginner trading with car gapping up so much on the one minute chart. How come you're not scalping it? Uh, because it's not following the spy. Right, so what you see me do with MU is you see, like when M, when the SPY starts to break highs of the day, I start scalping MU on the long side. Uh, and if the SPY starts dipping down, and MU's breaking under like a really significant level, I'll start scalping it on the downside, but it, it's based around the market's volatility. And so with CAR, even though it's really volatile, 
it's hard for me to get a good read on it and you know it's not it's making big moves but it's not following the market like i would prefer it to um and so like with my style specifically it's just not as favorable for me with some of these moves um and again, you know, the definition of insanity is continuously trying the same thing, expecting a different result. And so with me having such good results on MU to where I can just kind of milk it over and over again, it would be crazy for me to say, hey, I know it's working with MU, but I'm going to take a bigger risk with car. You know, point is, you just got to stick with what works uh, for you specifically. Uh, Thinking about taking another few hundred on MU, but we'll see. Well, at least from their news that I'm reading here, they put out on the 27th, they announced an additional need for $750 million in debt. Um, so that, that might cover their cash burn for a little while, but their cash burn is almost as bad as, let's say, the airlines. Do you guys short that? On? Joe said, do you guys short the bid, ask, or market? I use a market, uh, but I'm on tap since so it's a little bit different. I don't think I'd recommend necessarily using a market with any other platform, uh, but on TAFs, I find it to be an easier, more favorable way. And a lot of the time, you'll see me attacking very small spread stocks. And so the spread is negligible. It's like one cent maybe. And so with that, a market's not going to be that big of a deal. But if you're attacking a larger spread stock, a limit order is certainly going to be more favorable in my opinion. Hey, appreciate the sub, Isaac. He said, thanks on car, Mitch. Shorted 1,000 shares plus 300. Nice, man. Congrats, bro. It just, just shows you guys, uh, we talked about this free market can't marry stocks. Um, I felt bullish on the industry today. That's why I was long in HCZ. But I also started seeing the reversal happen at the top, the weakness start happening, and I didn't marry it. I actually got shorted the industry, and this is why it paid off. I can't help you right now, but I gotta finish working, okay? I'm sorry, but I'll help you afterwards. Deal? Alright. Um, I learned the same insanity definition in 8th grade. Yeah, it's Einstein's act. It's actually Einstein's definition of insanity. Uh, it's his definition. And I, I use it a lot because it's a relevant, you know, definition. You know what I mean? Especially with, like, trading. Man, HTC is getting might go to bankruptcy kind of wonders <laughs> this looks like an lk chart <laughs> yeah i'm in 200 shares of mu right now i missed my entry i was trying to get in at like 91 and I, my son came over here asking me about super mario and so I, I didn't end up jumping into it and so now i kind of missed my shot there but you know it is what it is uh can't complain about my day so far really <laughs> I don't think there's going to be too many people that believe I shorted car at 1841 today. <laughs> <laughs> so one of those trades where, uh, like the trades that you see a lot of heroes put up. And <laughs> it's going to be one to look back on and kind of be like, man, you know, we only got 100 shares. But yeah, that, that's what the trade calls for. Yeah, for sure. It's a good, a good balance of like risk and you know potential reward. Yeah, yeah guys, uh, and it's one thing that's been working well for me, guys. Often, the thing you guys can learn from it is try to. I've been really trying to get into a lot of four to ones, uh, kind of five to ones, and when I do reversal trades, I keep them as tight as small as to begin with. We lose twenty dollars, ten dollars, um, even if you want to go up to thirty dollars, it's not that bad. As long as our wins are going to be up there, 60, 80, over $100 wins. And that's what I'm really shooting for.
All right, guys. Like always, guys, uh, be careful once you start seeing uh, these massive bars. Um, really, I'm not telling anybody to start jumping in big in car in this area. Just getting kind of towards that point where, um, you know, you got a dollar up move uh, followed by uh, the first down move was from 850 down to about seven 1750 so when a dollar moved down then it bounced like almost 80 cents to a dollar then another dollar down so the the range is what you really need to understand now if you're trying to trade this it's a big reason why you guys don't see john just slam a thousand shares into it <laughs> cuz yeah. if it's going to go 80 cents up and 80 cents down it's not something you want to be big size on. Yeah, too much of a fluctuation there, for sure, 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. I took half of my position off on MU there, um, still holding 100 shares. Uh, I'll probably get out if it breaks under like 47.97 is my exit, most likely. All right, guys, for me, my out's going to be closer towards 16.50. And that would be a, a massive down move on the daily chart. Uh, daily chart has it going down. Uh, it could even go down past 16. So uh, we have a yesterday's close at 16.52. And below that, I think it could go down towards this level of 15.50s. So depends on where you want to attack. I'm going to attack more than 16.50s. I'm gonna get out here uh, exactly break even on MU up to 70 on the day, basically a break even trade. Um, I don't <laughs> hate it, but the spy is not fluctuating in the right direction. At least we were watching uh, big movers of the day today. That's for sure. Hey, but hey, buddy, listen, I can't play. You got to stop coming up to me asking. Uh, it's, once I'm done, you'll see me walk away from my computer, buddy, okay? And that's when I'm going to play. But I can't play with you until then. And if you come over here again and ask me, buddy, I'm going to not play with you at all, okay? I love you, buddy, but you got to listen. Sorry, guys. Kind of got to get into dad mode real quick. All right, guys, breaking through the 1670s here. Let's see if we can get down to the 1650s. Yeah, HTZ got wrecked. For sure. Wanna see it hold 17 now, guys. Starting to get extended away from the VWAP. We can always come back to VWAP, so I'm starting to look for profits down to 1650s. up here but I'm probably gonna close it down soon here guys um, uber wasn't bad today too uber had a lot of like nice little fades there too there you go 1670 hey I appreciate the sub now we're getting into the 60s We're out to close at 1650 here, guys. I think we get one more dip here. I'm trying to get out on that dip. Uh, I'm up 270. Mitch is up. It looks like uh, about uh, 140. I got, yeah. I got huh. Thank about you, about buddy. Great job. Breakout here. 
Alright guys, not gonna get greedy. I'm gonna take it right there. Take 62s. Done with the trade guys. $78 on that. I'll take it any day. Nice job brother. Uh, I'm gonna exit some here on MU. Holding 100 shares left. Nice little breakout here. I'm gonna get out here. Uh, not bad. $312 day guys. Not too shabby. Call one last MU scalp. I'm done. I think Mitch is done what you said too. Yeah, man. That's that's a great day for me. Not bad at all. Yeah. 100%, man. Good job, bro. Uh, Alright, guys. But yeah, like I said, you want to use the same platform, I'll post this link. You want to use the same scanners that we do, I'll post this, those links as well. Um, there's a link if you want to use our platform. Like I said, I think it's objectively cheap. Uh, the cheapest way to get started in my opinion. No PDT rule. Once you're approved, shorting ability, pretty decent amount of buying power for 400 bucks. Uh, there's better packages too that give you more buying power if you're interested in those. Check out the link. It's right there in the fundedaccount.com place. Um, appreciate the subs, guys. Remember, hit that like and subscribe button, team. We do this live for free every day. We're not experts or gurus, but you know, if you watch our trades every day, you'll see that we're actually pretty profitable traders, regardless of what people who want to hate on us say. Uh, we stream it all live every day, so we can't fake it if we wanted to. And you know, we hope you'll hit that subscribe button and join us again. Um, also, guys, go check out Trade Ideas, legit customizable scanners, and you can check out this link here. Um, you can use our promo code BT15 to get 15% off of trade idea scanners as well uh you can also go check out our website guys a lot of good free quality trading content like i said everything we put out there is free and if you see our website here uh you see we got a lot of cool stuff uh, all for free we have a free day trading course section that is just a free course that mission i have created um you can also find it in the playlist section of our youtube it's all free we also have a strategy section where you break down, you know, really profitable strategies. Uh, we have our short section here where you can see the different, you know, setups that we use, uh, breaking them down. And I'll post this link in the chat if you want to check that out as well. Another great way to help support us, guys, there's two other good ways if you do want to help support us. The first one is you, be you can become a channel member. It is $4.99. And, you know, like I said, we're just a free resource and community. And so uh, there's, you know, there's some behind the scene footage that you'll get. But really, it's just a great way to help support our channel here. Um, you can see the beginner trading link in the chat. Um, and if you want to become a channel member, you just click that join button next to the subscribe button. Uh, you can also see that we do have merch. And you can look at the description of this video and see our merch. Um, and I'll show you guys some of our merch here. Uh, we got some really cool merch, as you can see. Um, you know, we have hoodies, we've got phone cases, we've got shirts, we've got mugs. Uh, I really like these. I've actually ordered this one for myself here. And there's some pretty dope merchandise here if you want to check it out. It's a great way to help support our channel as well. And uh, like I said, you know, some pretty cool stuff, candlestick stuff. Um, and so if you want to check out our store here, I'll post the link. But again, you can either go to our homepage on YouTube and find the store there, or you can... Uh, or you can go to this link in the chat. Uh, let me find it, sorry. Go to this link in the chat. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it, guys. Appreciate the love team. Appreciate the support. I uh, definitely appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, not a bad day. Um, over $300 day, so it's been a pretty solid week. Um, not too shabby here. And so, uh, yeah, guys, with that said, good luck in the markets. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Yep. Like always, traders, keep up with our free videos. Everything's absolutely free. You can always learn more on your process, strategy breakdowns, risk management, pairs trading, relationship. There's so many things that we have for you guys. So definitely check it out, guys. Like always, I'll see you guys tomorrow.